What's up, guys? We are now post UFC fight night for ESPN. I'm guessing yep. the way it's <laughs> called. And Steven and I are just absolutely blown away and shocked if you have not seen the fight. We will get to the main event, but we're going to do a real quick breakdown of the, of the main card. Uh, the prelims was really good. If you haven't seen our video, please look below. You'll see a video. We did a real quick breakdown. And now the main card was awesome. Um, a lot of really good fights. Joseph Benavidez, once again, you know, he's a pro's pro. He's that was been a around. much closer fight than the first time, for Absolutely. Sure. You know, Dustin Ortiz is a stud, and so is Joseph Benavidez. And it's always tough fighting a guy for the second time. You kind of learn his tendencies. Mm -hmm. And Benavidez, you know, in my opinion, really – controlled about every aspect of that fight you know joseph benavidez has been around so long he's seen really everything you can possibly see a lot of scrambles in that fight that mm -hmm. that fight was like a battle of the scrambles who so could get the be better of the positions absolutely it was like one person was on top and then a scramble and the next person yeah. was on top it was very all over the place and but... dustin ortiz is a stud and for joseph benavidez you know i feel like he is the type of guy that's right there at the top of the heap mm -hmm. but demetrius johnson was the only guy preventing him from getting the belt because Joseph Benavidez beat Henry Cejudo. Yeah, that, you know? that's what I was about to say. So that's gonna be a fun one to look forward to in the future. Yeah. Well, if they have a, if they have a the uh, flyweight, the flyweight division, division. I mean, after tonight, I hope it sticks around. And I've been an advocate of like hoping the division sticks around. I've always liked the flyweights. I think they're fun. It reminds me of I don't. This is gonna be kind of nerdy, but I'm a huge Dragon Ball Z fan, so. It reminds, me, it reminds me of like the quick little battles. They're really quick. I, I and... really do that like that because they're so fast. They're so nimble. Exactly. You know, like, yeah, they might not have the one punch knockout power, but it's just they're always very, very technical. And mm -hmm. I feel like getting rid of the flyweight division is a really big mistake because I understand it doesn't put up huge numbers. You know, I understand. And that might have just been because of DJ because he ran through the division. It was kind of like maybe. Like, people felt like there wasn't talent at that division because mm -hmm. he made everybody look like a child compared to him. Yeah. Until yeah. until Henry Cejudo. Yeah, true. So, Benavidez got the win, which, you know, this card was kind of strange because we think they're doing away Very with the weird. flyweight division, and then they put some flyweight fights on there to kind of tease us a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like, is this a going-away party, or is this trying to I, I don't know. Trying to think... make us think, oh, flyweights are fun to see. We'll, we'll find out in the post-conference, hopefully. Yeah, so then we fast forward to – you just want to talk about the co-main event? Yeah, let's talk about that co-main event because that one was very interesting. You had Greg Hardy versus um, Alan Crowder. Yeah. Which a lot of people thought that Alan Crowder, myself thought, was just being fed to Greg Hardy. But Alan Crowder is a legit mixed martial artist, and mm -hmm. he used a lot of his skills to negate Greg Hardy's mm -hmm. power. He wore him out. He hung on him. He wrestled him. I mean, I was kind of impressed with Greg Hardy, not to lie, because I thought he had no ground game at all. But he looked like he was backing up against the fence, trying to get to his feet. So I saw, I, I could tell he's been in the gym working on that. But it's not enough. You know what yeah. I mean? He, he still has a lot of time ahead of him to grow. And unfortunately, the fight kind of stopped controversially and mm -hmm. sadly. You know, I don't. I was telling Stephen when we were watching the fight, I don't think in any way, shape, or form that's a, that's a co-main event. You know, no. that's like a pre, an early prelim to me. You have a guy in Greg Hardy who is not popular amongst the people at all. He's only, what, 4-0 in MMA. He's very young. He came up through the Contender Series. And then you have a guy, Alan Crowder. I know his last name's Crowder. I don't know his first name. And before this fight, I have never heard of that guy. Mm -hmm. So on a card where you have Donald Cerrone, you have Joseph Benavidez, you have a Paige Van Zandt. He came up on the Contender Series as Crowder, long as Crowder, yeah, Greg did. Hardy. So Okay. They both kind of came up into the UFC on the same platform. Yeah. Well, you know, I don't think for the people that you had on this card that could headline a historical card for the e first time on mm -hmm. ESPN, the co-main event, I com or the main event, I completely agree with. You know, Dillashaw, Cejudo. You know what I think but it was? But your co-main, come on. I think it's because this is the first ESPN event, and Greg Hardy was a, a guy who came from the NFL, so it's kind of like all these people that watch ESPN watch NFL, and they're like, oh, Greg Hardy, you know what I yeah. mean? So, and that could be, that could be, you know, they had Stephen A. Smith on there, Stephen A. Smith is very famous from ESPN, um, you know, I think Greg Hardy's going to be a typical, I don't mean typical, but he's a one-trick pony, he's going to be a heavyweight who is going to have that KO power, and I think his UFC we saw a lot life of will be pretty short. We saw a lot of Nganu in him. Yeah. And we didn't tell you what happened yet. 
I, you guys probably all seen the fight. But what happened was he need he need Alan Crowder in the head pretty much when both knees are down or one knee was down. One down for sure. So a legal knee to the head, yeah. and of course, I mean, most fighters when they get a legal knee or something illegal, they. They just take the victory. You know what mm. I mean? Why go in there and take more damage? And that's exactly what Alan Crowder did. He well, just didn't. and this is not what Greg Hardy needed anyway. You know, he's got domestic violence charges. The UFC gives him a chance. You know, he's he's been an advocate for he's been changed. And then it's his first big-time fight on a big stage. He gets disqualified for a knee I, Yeah, head. I don't think there was any ill will. No, I just think not it at was all. Just, he was inexperienced. No. I don't even know if he knew that I don't rule. think he did. Well, you know what I mean? And he was gassed. Like, you could tell... After the first round, he was breathing super hard. Yeah. So, Well, the reason why I don't think he knew what it was was because he kneed him in the head, the ref jumps in, and, and, and you have Crowder laying on the ground flat on his back, and then you have Hardy kind of half laying on the side, and he's looking at the ref like, what I do? Mm -hmm. You know, he had big eyes like, what I do? And then you can tell he's like, oh, crap, I think I did something wrong. So yeah. I don't think there was any ill will either. But he just simply didn't know because he doesn't have any experience. He started training MMA three years ago, mm -hmm. and now he's in the UFC. The guy still excites me. Though. He does. I'm excited and to see what he's gonna do. He's got big time KO power. He's he's athletic. You know, there, he played yeah. in the NFL, so that guy is gonna catch on very quickly. Now, if he goes to a, a big time camp, which I think he's at, isn't mm -hmm. he? AKA, I believe. So he's at uh, AKA. He trains with Dean Thomas. So 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 he's at a big time. If camp. You don't know that's Amanda Nunes's coach. So oh no, that, you're you're thinking of. Uh, AKA's in San Jose. That's DC's camp. So ATT or... A Are you thinking the one... Is that the one in Florida? American Top Team. American Top. Never okay. yeah, ATT. ATT. So, so he's at a great camp. So Sorry, I've been give drinking this, apple juice all night. Give this guy a few years. He will be... He, honestly, I think he'll be pretty studly. Yeah. So, so anyways, Greg Hardy lost via DQ. He'll be back. Dana White. They need heavyweights. The UFC needs heavyweights. And on to the main event. So all week leading up to this main event, Brett's been telling me that he has a weird feeling about Cejudo, and I've been telling him the same. That well, we before he goes farther, we both said the same thing with Cejudo and Demetrius Johnson mm -hmm. because De, uh, Henry Cejudo has been just every fight like leaps and bounds. His improving. stand up just, just yeah, like you said, leaps and bounds just. He just got so much better in the stand-up, and then he was able to work in the wrestling with the stand-up. I mean, this became a well-rounded fighter. And and with something that people don't really hit on is his personality is growing. He's starting to get a little more tenacious. Mm -hmm. He's starting to get a little more lippy. He's starting to get a little more attitude. Instead of being Mr. Thank you for having me. I'm so grateful to be here. He's starting to accept, like, I'm the baddest dude, you know, on yeah. the planet. And TJ in the, the lead-up almost seemed like the fight was won. He was looking past Cejudo, talking about fights with Max Holloway. And you you know you can't do that in mm -hmm. MMA. You cannot yeah. look past someone, especially a champion and an Olympic gold medalist. Like, are you kidding yeah. me? And I'm a huge TJ Dillashaw fan, but in the lead-up to this fight... I, he just left a sour taste mm -hmm. in my mouth, talking like he was going to ruin the flyweight division. When he has friends, Joseph Benavidez, that trains in or um, fights in the flyweight mm -hmm. division. It's just not okay. Yeah. So, yeah, it just left a kind of sour taste in my mouth. And then right before <clears throat> the fight happened, right before we watched it, about 20 minutes ago, I turned to Brent, and I'm like, I got a feeling Cejudo's going to knock out TJ. I got a feeling <coughs> TJ is just going to be too <laughs> confident in his stand-up. And Cejudo's going to catch him. And he did. 32 Brett seconds. Brett said, no way. I figured if I, I figured if Cejudo was going to win, he was going to win a, a decision. Which is understandable. Yeah. Um, and to, to be completely honest, looking when this fight first broke, Steven and I talked about it, and I was, try, I was like, there's no way Dillashaw loses this. Mm -hmm. His striking's better. He's got great takedown defense. He, if Cejudo stands and bangs, Dillashaw's going to pick him apart. But as the as time went by and we got closer and closer to this fight, I kept having this weird. Even though I picked Dillashaw mm -hmm. to win, we do fight picks every night on every fight night. Even though I picked Dillashaw, I had this weird suspicion like Cejudo's no chump, you know, and, no. and and he doesn't get any respect at all. You don't just become Olympic champion, you know, yeah. off of. Well, I think he does best when his back's against the wall. When he feels disrespected, that's, that's when he one... feels like he gets no respect. 
that's when he that's when he does best. That's one thing he said in the whole lead up. Like if you're gonna throw a hail mary to anyone, throw it to me. Like yeah. I'm the guy. I've been there and I've I've done it. You yeah, know? and that's true. So now you know he's a. He, and what did the weight cut do in that? Because exactly as you know, they they did like on ESPN, I believe it was. They did a sports science thing about cutting weight, and when you cut all this water, you your brain inside your skull. Is usually surrounded by water, but when you're cutting that weight, you're taking all that water out of your brain. If you don't rehydrate, it leaves more room for that brain to bounce against the skull mm -hmm. and get knocked out, you know? Mm -hmm. So I wonder if that had anything to play. It's very you know? possible, and you would have to think because Dillashaw cut an extra 10 pounds, which a lot of people might not think a lot, but that's a lot of weight to be cutting when you're already shredded as it is, mm -hmm. you know? And then, um, you know, moving forward in the fight, after there was a stoppage, um, Dillashaw was pretty much pleading to the ref, like, what are you doing? But Steven and I watched the interview. I think that, and, and to be completely fair and play devil's advocate, I think you can make an argument both ways. Mm -hmm. I think Cejudo has a good argument. Um, he Watching he, the fight live, both of us were like, yeah, that it should have been yeah. stopped. He got dropped like three or four times. Yeah. But rewatching it, he was falling back, catching himself, trying to wrestle. Yeah. Like, he was in it, but... Then again, how much damage is exactly. a man going to take? Exactly, and that's what I'm you know? saying. Well, what do you consider too much damage? What do you consider defending yourself? Dillashaw was putting his hands on the ground trying to move, but he mm -hmm. wasn't defending himself. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, well, he was. He was moving. You know, what I mean, to an extent, but Cejudo was still landing shots. Yeah, you know, so that then the referee has to play into factor. You know, okay, you've been dropped three times in about. A two minutes, or I'm sorry, like a five second span. Mm -hmm. So if you're watching this video and you didn't watch the fight, Cejudo gave, it looked like a shove, right? He gave Dillashaw a shove, and as Dillashaw was coming up, Cejudo threw a head kick. He, it, I thought it was blocked, but then Dillashaw went down. Dropped to his knees. And then Cejudo started doing some ground and pound, which didn't look like a whole lot was landing and then it kind of just looked like a scramble it, it was a scramble tj looked very composed I, but. I believe so and then as dillashaw was getting up from that cejudo landed a shot on the chin and then tj went down again cejudo wrapped his arm around his body and started landing shots and then the ref called and then it was like a scramble from that yeah. point yeah yeah and so i called. don't see anything wrong with with the stoppage because if you really watch it in slow-mo there was a lot of head shots that were landing and then you got to think about the fighter you got to think about you know, um, how much is too much, which you can plead both ways. So I understand where TJ Dillashaw's coming We already from. know what's next. It's unfortunate we don't get that TJ versus Max Holloway because, I mean, just thinking about that, you know, I mean, I knew I don't want to think past the Huda like TJ was, but that, that sounded like an awesome fight. But now we know what's next. It's going to be that rematch at 135. It's going to have to be. Because for TJ's bill. And he wants it, too. And Cejudo gave it to him. Cejudo mm -hmm. said, props to you for coming to my weight. We'll run it back at 135. And I think, once again, that shows what kind of man Cejudo mm -hmm. is. I beat you at my weight division. Now I want to solidify it. I want to beat you at your weight division. And that weight cut might not have as big of a factor. Dillashaw is going to be pumped and ready to go. And now he has to give him his respect. Because mm -hmm. if he loses to him twice, there's no argument. Exactly. You know, so... You know, I hope the flyweight division, in short, doesn't get blown away. I understand it's not the most exciting, but I think Steven was right. I, it's because Dilli or, uh, Demetrius Johnson was running through people. Now there's a new champion. There's always new blood coming into the UFC. Joseph Benavidez is still there. You got Ray Borg. You got a bunch of guys. John Lineker. Or no, John Lineker's a 35 year yeah. name. But... You got a bunch of guys, and that's their livelihood. You know, they have families to feed. They're fighting because they love it. So I hate to see guys be put out of a job. You got Pettis. You got Sergio, Joseph Benavidez. Right. Yeah, you got a lot of people in that weight division. You got Justin Ortiz. You know, I mean, you got a lot of people yeah. in that division. But I mean, we'll see. The UFC. We know before the UFC does whatever the hell the UFC wants yeah. to do. It doesn't matter if it's like in the favor of the fans or the fighters. The UFC is going to do what makes the most money. Mm -hmm. So and the new belt, I don't care what anybody says is cool. I like the new belt too. My buddy just texted me and said he hates the new belt. Says it looks like a toy. Once again, like I think it's a cool belt. But I do too. 
I right? mean, and it's more personalized to the fighter. It's got the flags, and I think mm-hmm. that they're going to put the event on there. I believe so. Yeah. Okay. So they're just trying to, but you have to, you got to grow or you get killed. That's just the mm-hmm. way politics works. That's the way the economy works. You got to grow, and that's what the UFC is doing. So I want to hear from you guys. I want to know what did you think about that stoppage in that main event? Did you think the fight was stopped a little early? Also, I want to hear about what do you think about Greg Hardy and his. UFC debut. Do you think he deserved that co-main event slot? I don't think anybody thinks he deserved I don't. it. I, I'll be an advocate. He did not. But I want to know spot. what you guys just think about it in general in mm-hmm. the in the comments. And we always um, reply to everyone that comments. I love getting into conversations with people out there. So mm-hmm. yeah, let us know, guys. Anyways, anything left to say? No, no. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, there's a lot of big fight cards coming up in this ESPN thing. You know, it's going to be a cool deal. So we'll be posting plenty of videos moving forward. Cool. Anyways, guys, peace.